Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 111 of the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing a chapter from my book, The Seven P's of Publishing Success. I'm going to be sharing the uh, audio chapter on progression. And uh, I thought that would be an important thing to do as we get towards the end of the year and we're looking at uh, the things that we've done, the things that we haven't done. And I think the importance of progression is uh, its always a good thing to, to pause and look at. You can probably tell that I am a little bit under the weather. I got uh, sick with a really nasty flu just post-Christmas, and I'm uh, recovering. I basically spent um, most of uh, Thursday in bed and uh, a good part of Friday morning as well. But uh, in any case, I'm going to keep the introduction to this really, really short. Let's hear from this episode's sponsor, Find Away Voices. This episode is sponsored by Find Away Voices. Find Away Voices is a way for independent authors and small publishers to get their works distributed to the broadest network of retailers and libraries out there. As of the recording now, Find Away Voices can get your audiobook into 43 different retailer and library channels. If you're looking to have a professionally produced audiobook done, you can also do that through Find Away Voices. There are various options. You can work with them to find a professional narrator from their network of professional narrators around the world, finding just the right voice for your book. And it is an opportunity where you can pay outright and own the rights to the audio by paying the narrator outright through Find Away Voices. Or you can take advantage of one of the programs, which is Voices Share, which allows you to pay a reduced rate for the narrator and then do a combination of royalty splitting. Lots of choice, lots of options, and lots of control for Findaway. I should note that as of November 1st, 2019, your audiobook royalty rate for Nook audiobooks increased from 45% to 50%. Similarly, they announced a, a similar increase in royalties to Apple Books. So if you're looking to expand your audiobook horizon to find new readers around the world, you really should check out Find Away Voices. And you can find out more about Find Away Voices over at starkreflections.ca slash findaway. Well, that's it for the introductory matter to this episode. Let's get right on to the main content, Progression. Progression. There are two main types of progression to explore here. The first is related to the craft of writing, and the second is about progression within the industry. Progression in your craft. In the first of the P's, we looked at the importance of practice, of continuing to write every day if possible, with the goal of using that to become better. But, even though it's stated, and for some, assumed, the reason for practice isn't just the matter-of-fact more words on the page that result from it. It's the other thing that happens when a person continues to work at something. It is progression, improvement, even if it is by imperceptible wins. Though progression is the natural byproduct of practice, it is important to split it into its own unique element. That is how important it is. Because just doing the same thing over and over, without improving upon and continually learning, is just doing the same thing over and over. If, to use a crude example, you don't understand the basics of grammar, you might continue to use the word your, Y-O-U-R, in the incorrect context when you mean to write your, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, as in you are, in more sentences, rather than learning and improving. 
you're never going to improve versus you're never going to improve. That is where working with an excellent editor can help. They can help you find patterns of habits in your writing that you don't notice, and which might be almost invisible to you, but which can be off-putting for a reader, perhaps even kicking them out of the narrative you're trying to lead them through. And yes, even the best writers still have well-formed habits and word pattern choices that can be jarring. To consider this, because it is often easier to see it in someone else than in yourself, think of a friend or an acquaintance you know who regularly peppers their everyday speech with a colorful word or phrase. Maybe it's the F word and its variations, typically just adding ing to the word, that they liberally sprinkle into their talk as an adjective and an adverb. So much that, after a short discussion with them, you'd have enough money to buy yourself a coffee or perhaps a more expensive alcohol-based drink, which could come in handy in terms of helping you deal with the excessive and repetitive F-bombs. Or, perhaps it's the insertion of the extraneous and unnecessary word like in speech. When I was growing up, excessive use of this word was an indicator of valley girl style talk, but it has moved more and more into popular culture and modern speech from adults to children, and even the well-educated, not necessarily for the creation of a simile, and not just as a misused adjective or adverb, but for dialogue attribution and as vocal pauses in speech itself. Taking a nickel from each use in some conversations could lead you with enough money to purchase an entire round of drinks, which we could all, like, really use in, like, certain circumstances, right? I used two examples because they can be jarring and easily recognizable and are quite likely something you've experienced and can thus easily see or hear. In your writing, the patterns and overuse of some words are likely to be subtler, but a good editor can usually help you detect them and hunt them down with an unforgiving and unrepentant red pen. Yes, writing and writing and writing some more is a fundamental key. But there's a quiet and often unstated, or perhaps understated, additional element to all that practice that comes with it. It is the ability to continue to learn and become better at your writing. I think that the openness to learning, no matter how practice skilled or proficient a person is, is an essential key. I like to reflect on Neil Peart, the drummer from the Canadian rock band Rush. An inductee into the Modern Drummer Hall of Fame in 1983, making him the youngest person to ever receive that honor, Peart is often regarded as one of the best drummers to emerge from the rock world. Initially emulating the icons he grew up enjoying, drummers such as Keith Moon from The Who or John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, and spending endless hours in his basement practicing, playing like them, Peart developed his own unique style, inspiring an entire new generation of drummers. And yet, despite all the accolades, awards, and honors, and having played drums for 30 years, in 1995, he stopped to relearn how to play drums under the tutelage of Freddie Gruber, a legendary jazz drummer and teacher. In a 2017 article in Music Radar, Peart is quoted as saying that Gruber helped him loosen up his playing. That's what his coaching was all about, Peart said. He was all physical, not musical. He's not that kind of teacher who teaches you to play the drums. He teaches you how to dance on the drums. But that wasn't enough. In 2007, he continued to be a student, wanting to refine his skills and be able to do big band-style drumming in honor of the legendary Buddy Rich, so studied and relearned drum timing techniques with Peter Erskine. Regardless of how good he was, of how respected and successful he was, Peart never stopped learning or relearning the craft he loved so well. So, taking a cue from Neil Peart, who relearned how to dance on the drums, What are the ways that, through regular practice and continuing to learn and relearn the skills of writing, are you willing to continue to master the fine art of making the words dance on the page? A free weekly resource that I find extremely beneficial towards continuing to relearn and focus on refining and honing my own writing craft is the podcast Writing Excuses, which is hosted by authors Dan Wells, Brandon Sanderson, Mary Robinette Cowell, and Howard Taylor. The podcast, which mostly focuses on the craft of writing, is promoted as 15 minutes long because you're in a hurry and we're not that smart. It is meant to be 
digested in a format that can be enjoyed even on the shortest of commutes or while performing some other daily chores, such as doing the dishes or walking the dog. Even if the podcast ever stops producing new episodes, there are, as of this writing, 13 seasons of incredible free backlist material that you can learn from. Progression in the Business If progression with the craft of writing itself is the foundation upon which you create a pathway to success, progression in understanding the business of writing and publishing allows you to build a structure that fits in with the current architectural trends. The business of writing and publishing evolves. A little more than a decade ago, ebooks weren't really a thing. Digital publishing involved print on demand, POD. There were no easy paths to self publishing via Kindle, Kobo, and the other ebook platforms. The Kindle and Kindle Direct Publishing didn't exist until 2007. Smashwords, the world's first major ebook distribution platform, wasn't founded until 2008. If Today, you are considering your publishing and self-publishing options. You haven't learned all that has changed and has been made available to writers since 2007. Then you would still be only looking at the old way of doing things. Your paths would, for the most part, be to either work at finding an agent and or publisher to sell your book, or paying a ridiculous amount of money to a vanity publishing outfit to have the book self-published using POD technology. I know that is a bit of an exaggerated example, but I wanted to use it to illustrate a point. Just as you, as a writer, are constantly changing, growing, and evolving, so too is the business of writing and the business of publishing. I've been working in the book selling, writing, and publishing profession since 1992, and I've witnessed some dramatic shifts. But as much as I already have experience and information and insights, I am still, every single day, reading and listening to and watching developments in our industry. And I'm focusing not just on self-publishing, but also on traditional publishing, because both are constantly changing and evolving. Around the time that the Kindle and digital publishing was emerging, New York Times bestselling author Kevin J. Anderson, a writer of about 50 books with millions of copies in print, started to detect a shift in the industry, and gathered together with his wife, fellow author Rebecca Mista, and friends David Farland, Eric Flint, and Brandon Sanderson to discuss the changes and to help teach one another the new elements from the publishing landscape so they could better navigate those changes. Those meetings eventually became Superstars Writing Seminars, where Anderson, the aforementioned colleagues, and James A. Owen come together every year at a gathering in Colorado Springs, Colorado, not just to teach the business of writing and publishing to between 100 and 200 writers in a very intimate and interactive setting, but to also continue to learn about the industry themselves. Anderson and his colleagues aren't just teaching, but they are continuing to learn. If you can look at a group of writers who have millions of copies of their books in print, are published in multiple languages, and been on the New York Times bestseller lists too many times to count, and yet recognize the importance of continuing to learn, then there are, indeed, things you and I can continue to also progress within our own learning. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.